But now, also, though, Nietzsche, you were signed to 8 Ball and MJG? Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. How the hell did you link up with Ball and G? Wow. Um, Augusta, Georgia, I was... Uh, I was I was I was on the radio. I was mm. doing clubs, and I had this song called "Running Out of Money." Mm. And uh, my brother Flacco, mm. my brother Flacco, uh, Bar's manager Duprano, was calling. What up, though, Duprano? Yeah, yeah. yeah Shouts out, Du. Uh, du was calling Flacco to see about some other artist mm. up, up in Augusta, yeah. and. Uh, Shots out, I gotta give my I gotta give Flacco his flowers. Uh my brother Flacco said, Well, if you're looking for an artist in Augusta with a real buzz and a fan base, you gotta talk to when it was P Nice at the time. Okay. You know, that's 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 the one talking about me. Yeah. Cause you know, I had I had I had a, I had a nice thing going. I yeah, had yeah. a buzz. And he was like, Oh, send me his music. And it was really, bro, it was really the relationship that I had. With uh, with a radio personality a guy named Flacco or whatever that uh, that really st started that off. Mm -hmm. He sent my music because when you hot in your city, the yeah. people gonna sing your praises. I ain't had to say nothing. Exactly. You, when they, when you put the work in Come and when you now. legitimately have a buzz, Come on and you, the people are requesting your song and you don't have to play that game because the fact <laughs> of the matter is that people actually <laughs> like your music and you built your fan base, you don't have to say nothing. The people will sing your exactly. praises. And so the man came, mm. called the city, said, who's hot out here? He said, me. Yeah. He sent him my music. We met. Yeah. I never forget. We met at Carabas. They called me. He's like, "Hey, you wanna you wanna meet with um?" I said, "Man, I ain't trying to meet with nobody because yeah. I done been told I've been through that that dog and pony show so many times. Facts. I don't feel like getting my hopes up, Come and on. I got a good thing going, and I got the money to do it." Exactly. And they was like, "Well, man, he say you wanna go to Carabas." I was like, <laughs> "Fat ass." I asked my girl. I said, like, "I said, baby, you hungry?" She said, "I could go for Carabas." I said, "Well, shit, let's go." Exactly. And we went. Just for the free dinner. Yeah, yeah. I met with Duprano. He said, man, I want to rock with you. I want to I want to do something with you or whatever. Um, I didn't know how to take it at first. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we, we talked back and forth. We negotiated for a little bit. And uh, it wasn't until they came to Augusta and saw me perform live in front of them people and see the cop of the following reaction. that I had built. Yeah. When that record came on. And Ball brought Ball had brought me out to yeah. the you know to the stage or whatever. That was a monumental moment to have Eight Ball bring you out in front of your city, but come on now, boy, legendary for real. Exactly, stop playing with me come forever on in, the, in the record books. <laughs> <laughs> and none of y'all niggas had a goddamn legend bring exactly. out. Exactly, but anyway, um, yeah, man, for him to bring me out, man, he and they saw they saw the 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 people actually really liked and loved me and yeah. my music and. Man, we ended up making, you know, we ended up working together, you know okay. what I'm saying? And uh, those are the most genuine, humble individuals mm. that I've ever met in yeah. this rap game as far as rappers as A-Ball and MJG. My God. They are the most genuine and humble individuals. You would, sometimes you have to sit, I'm, I'm, I remember the day I got signed, I'm like, nigga, A-Ball is in my motherfucking living room, <laughs> rolling up a blunt. <laughs> He is rolling up a blunt. Yeah. And I'm talking about, I'm in, I'm in the pot mints back then. I'm in the pot mints. Yeah. Ball is in the damn eight ball. Come on. Eight ball and MJG is in my living room rolling up a blunt. My God. And he is he is respectful enough to ask me, can he fire it up? Come on now. I'm like, nigga, smoke. <laughs> you eight ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, man, I, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it was a blessing, bro. Yeah. To, to just be... A fly on the wall and soak up that much game from people that are that knowledgeable and, 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 and just just good dudes, bro. Okay, when you talk about soaking up that game, though, man, what were some of the major keys that you took with you from that uh, experience, man? Relationships worth more than money. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I always saw if you if you never noticed, man, A Ball and MJG ain't never had no beef for no 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 rap beef for nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, them niggas cool for real. They yeah. cool in real life. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm don't get it twisted. They stand up individuals. Exactly. But they just good, humble niggas. Come on. And they they taught me how to mind my business sometimes. Come on now. You know what? You might want to just hush up sometime. You don't gotta say everything. And yeah. you don't gotta react to everything. That's right. And man, like, like, like they, they they move as grown men. 
Come and I respect now. that because you know a lot of these rappers can be childish. They can be kids at times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that was never the case when I was moving around and touring with them. Like we 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 had a a respectful gentleman gentleman campaign. Exactly. And uh, and that's how I try to you know conduct my business as a day. I conduct my business as a grown man. We stand on principle. We stand on morals. And there's certain things we ain't gonna we ain't gonna do. We ain't gonna crash out for certain likes. We ain't gonna crash yeah. out for these views. Yeah. And we gonna you know we gonna be able to go home with our heads held high. Yeah. Because you know we ain't know we ain't doing no sucker shit. Come on and now. That's what Baller G taught me. Uh, studio sessions, though, man. Did you get a chance to record with these guys? Man, yeah, man. I what got the hell was that like, sir? Got, okay. Oh, Growing up being an eight ball and MJG yeah, fan, yeah. now you signed to him, but yeah. then you had to hit the booth with him, man. Yeah, what yeah. the hell happened in that moment? So uh, the first one I worked with was Ball. Yeah, yeah. First song we did, I ended up, ended up being one of my singles called uh, Real Niggas Fuck Better. <laughs> yeah, nigga. Hey, man. Yeah. And um, once again, it's like an out of body experience, bro. Because if you sit there and you really process the fact that nigga, that's eight ball in that motherfucking booth, Thanks. getting with, bro, you gonna psych yourself out. Exactly. So I'm just like, I, I just, I, it, it, it's not eight ball and MJG, nigga. That's ball and that's G. They're my partners. They're my big homies. Yeah. They're my big brothers. Yeah. And so I gotta psych myself out because so I because I don't wanna lose my mojo. You train a damn because thought. I'm like, man, I, I wanna make sure that I'm I'm, I'm going hard. Mm. And you know, to be <laughs> honest, man, once again, brother, my brother's so humble, man. The dude got on the record, ball got on the record, and he asked me, he's like, bro, you fuck with it? <laughs> do I fuck with? <laughs> do I, yeah, Come on. Like, who, first of all, why, my word don't even. My opinion don't matter, nigga. You ain't Paul. Exactly. But the fact that you humble enough, knowing that this is my record, that you yeah. ask me, did you like it? Because if not, you will do it again. Exactly. No, nah, fact, Matt, you good. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it, it was a dope experience. It was uh, everything was organic with them, brother. Everything yeah. was um organic with them. Like I, you know, I. I I don't understand how these guys be having, you know, weird things to say about their labels and stuff. Cause I, I ain't gonna cap, bro. I don't got nothing weird to say about mine. Exactly. It, it was a gentlemanly situation. Uh, they learned and taught me a ton of shit. And uh, you know, uh, I, I I believe that I'm going. I'm going to continue to learn from them guys. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, we locked in for life. God damn it, if Ball need me to cut his grass tomorrow, I'm cutting it. <laughs> if, if G need me to goddamn change his oil, yeah. I'm changing it. Yeah, yeah. And if goddamn Duprano, you know what I'm saying, need a nigga to clean up the garage, Come I'm going to be right there. And oh, so, man. you know, whenever they call me, it's right. I mean, you can, you, you'll see Push Management, which is a company we was under. You'll, you'll yeah. still see that on my flyers. See that? You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's a legacy thing. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. uh, I, I learned so much from them guys, bro. Um... And I'm appreciative of them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because they could have signed anybody. Come on They could have signed Young Dolph. They could have signed Yo Gotti. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Look at all the talent that's coming out of Memphis. Yep. Wait a minute, brother. You mean you signed my ass? Well, shit. <laughs>